Hello, this is Mrs. Crib. We're going to be doing um, a lecture on the notes, but primarily on the Lewis Knot structures. So what I first want you to do is pull your notes out and your periodic chart, please. I will be referring to that on this lecture, but I would like you to have it to look at. Um, we're at section 6B and 6C, but we're going to be all the way down here starting with 6.6, um, .6, Lewis Dot Structures for Compounds. Um, remember again, you're going to need to to um, know the diatomic molecules, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. You should know those by now. But what I want to do now is work through the um, ways to do Lewis Dot Structures initially for covalent molecules, covalent with covalent bonds, and then we'll do some for um, some um, covalent molecules that real, are really ions. So let's start off right here, okay? Um, this is uh, chlorine. This is one of the diatomic elements right there. So we're going to see that chlorine is a nonmetal. So you should look at your periodic chart and see that, and I'll pull up mine right here. There's chlorine and it's in the halogen column, group 17, and this is the side that are the um, nonmetals. And you can notice over here the nonmetals are all these three categories, including the halogens. So see how that lights up? It's pretty cool, isn't it? All right, back to um, this. Here we go. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're first going to write the Lewis dot structure for each one of the atoms. So we have, we draw the symbol for chlorine, and it's a halogen. It has seven valence electrons. It's in the column 17. So I'm going to put the seven valence electrons around it. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And there's not a right or wrong way to do it. Um, I'm going to draw the second chlorine atom in this molecule. And I'm going to draw X's just to differentiate them. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right, now both of these atoms are missing one um, electron because they want to complete their octet. So what they do is they share. And what you're going to do is anything that's in the middle, anything in the middle of the atoms right in this area, right here, they both get to count them as part of their octet. So they're sharing it. I'm going to draw the little L so you can see it better. All right, so they're going to share this one. So what I'm going to do is basically just put it in the middle and put the X in the middle and erase it from where it was before so that um, you can see a little bit better what's going on. So now this, these two electrons right here are being shared between both chlorine atoms. So I'm going to draw the octet. So this is chlorine and it gets to count all of these. It gets to count the ones in the middle as well as the ones on the north, the south, and the um, west, or east rather, and west. Okay, so these right there count for both, and I'm going to draw the octet for this chlorine atom. And notice it gets to count north, south, east, and west. So eight atom, eight uh, electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the octet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the octet. Now, when they're sharing them in the middle, that is um, you, you uh, one a pair of electrons gets shared. You don't just share one, you share a pair. So I draw a line to represent that pair of electrons. So I'm going to redraw this molecule now. And that pair of electrons is going to be represented by a single line in between the two atoms. So that that is two. That counts as two electrons. And then I'm going to draw all the electrons they're not sharing and put it back around them. And this would be my final picture of the Lewis dot structure for chlorine. All these electrons here, these are the unbonded pairs. It's one of those terms, the unbonded or lone pairs. It could be either one of those terms. So those are unbonded or lone pairs. And then the, the bonded pair is right here. So that, remember, this counts as two electrons. This is two, two electrons. So again, we can count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons around this chlorine. And two, four, six, seven, eight electrons around the other chlorine. 
All right, now let's do oxygen. Oxygen, we are going to draw two atoms because there's two of them in the molecule, according to this right here. And if you look on the periodic table, let's see, here's oxygen. It's in column 16, and that means column 16 has six valence electrons, just like column 17 for chlorine had seven valence electrons. Oxygen has six valence electrons. And so we're going to draw those six valence electrons around the oxygen atom. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six. And the reason I'm drawing it this way is I'm leaving the space in the middle to move electrons into. It doesn't matter. I could, I could draw them another way. I could draw the, the, the six for this one. One, two, three, four, five, six. It does not matter because now I'm going to move electrons. And I move the smallest number possible so that both atoms get to count um, an octet. We want to complete that octet. Remember, anything in the middle, they get to share. So these two right here are technically already in the middle. So I'm going to actually move them a little bit over to get them really close to the middle so we can you know, get a better idea of how they're sharing those. And then, um, but remember the red ones are the ones I initially wrote down for this particular oxygen atom. So now this oxygen atom is very happy. It has two, four, six, eight electrons. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a line around that octet. Okay. But this oxygen atom, even though this line is here, does not have eight electrons yet. It only has two, four, six. Okay, well, they need to share some more in order for both of them to have eight. And the only thing I can do, if I, it would, does, does not do me any good to erase these two right here and put them in the middle. Because, let, let's do that and see what happens. Okay, um, I'm going to get the red again. I want to move these two from here over to here. So I'll put them in the middle. Put that one in the middle, and I got to go back and erase where they started off because I can't. I can't have to keep the same number of electrons I started with. Okay. Well, what does that do? That actually causes this oxygen to have two more, two more. And I'm going to have to make this really tiny so I can erase this black line. Now. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how hard this is. Am I doing it? I'm doing it. All right. Okay. Now, this oxygen now has two more. It gets to count these two. Two, four, six at the bottom, eight, ten. It has too many electrons. We're looking for the octet. So moving these two in the middle did not help. Um, but I, I st this, this oxygen still gets to count them. This oxygen has two up here and then four more right there. So two, four, six all together. So what I need to do is figure out a way of getting this oxygen to have eight. So I can move any of the electrons that are around. So I'm going to take these two right here that only this oxygen currently has and move them over there. And that is perfectly okay. When you're doing Lewis dot structures, you can move them anywhere. All right, so now I'm going to take these two blue ones and, and transfer them to the other side. All right, now let me erase my um, arrow and also erase the, the electrons for where they started off because they're now not there anymore. They're on this other side. Okay, so now let's draw my lines. Let's see what happens. These are two in the middle. Are these any, anywhere in the middle? They both get to count them. That looks like a happy face, doesn't it? All right, so I'm going to draw the line. I'm going to draw the circle, rather. Two, four, six, eight. This guy has an octet. What about this guy? Two, four, six, eight. I can draw the other circle. Anything in the middle they share. So now this oxygen has its octet. Two, four, six, eight. And this oxygen. Two, four, six, eight. All right. When they share two electrons, that's a single bond. And when they share another two electrons, that makes a double bond. So now I'm going to redraw the molecule. And the ones they're sharing, I'm going to draw lines for. So that's a double bond between the two oxygens. And each line represents two electrons. And then I'm going to draw all the unbonded pairs. There's two up here and two over here and two up here 
and two over here. Okay, that is the Lewis dot structure for oxygen. It has a double bond in the middle. And you should always count how many electrons you start with and how many you ended with. So at the beginning, I had two oxygens, and two oxygens each had six valence electrons for a total of 12 electrons. All right, how many do I have over here? I have two, four, six, eight, remember this is two, 10 and 12, 12 electrons in the final Lewis dot structure. So the electron count should always end up being exactly the same. Now let's do nitrogen, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. All right, let's figure out how many electrons we start with. Nitrogen, we have two atoms right there, and each nitrogen atom has how many valence electrons? Well, let's look at the periodic table. There it is, nitrogen. It's in column 15, or 5A. That means it has five, the five in the ones place, five valence electrons. So each nitrogen atom has five valence electrons. So two times five equals 10 electrons. That's how many electrons we have total for this particular uh, molecule. Now let's draw the two nitrogens side by side. Um, let's draw the, the five valence electrons that each at nitrogen has. One, two, three, four, five. I'll use a green now. One, two, three, four, and five. All right, notice I didn't put anything in the middle this time because I told you, you can move them anywhere you want to, but the, the goal is to get the octet. Now, what you won't see is you, you most of the time will not see a single electron sitting down here by itself. So I'm gonna move the two single electrons into the middle. I'm gonna take this one and put it here, and I take this one and put it here. So first I'll move the green one, and then I'm gonna erase the old green one. And then I'm going to move the red one, and I'm going to erase the old red one. All right, now how many electrons do they have? Well, at the moment, this uh, nitrogen has two, four, and then they get to share the ones in the middle, six. And this nitrogen has two, four, and they get to share the ones in the middle, so they both count it, six. They out both have six. That's not enough. We need eight. All right, so. Well, let's move some electrons around. I'm going to take uh, this red pair. I'm, not, I'm, I'm just randomly picking some, guys. It doesn't matter. I could pick up this green pair. But I'm going to take this red pair right here, and I'm going to move it into the middle. So take this red pair, put it in the middle. One, two. And I'm going to erase them from where they were before. All right. Now let's count again. This um, nitrogen has two, four, six, eight. So this guy now is happy, but this nitrogen has two, four, six. It still doesn't have eight. It needs more. Now remember, if it's in the middle, this middle area, they both get to count it. So now what I'm going to do is take these green guys and put them in the middle. That way both of them get to count. So I'm going to put the green in the middle. One, two, and I'm going to erase them from where they started out to be. All right, now let's recount again. Two, four, six, and eight. So this guy has eight now. What about this one? Two, four, six, and eight. I'm going to draw my circles. Remember, if it's in the middle, they both share them. They both get to count the ones in the middle. So this is not circles, obviously. All right, there's the octet for this nitrogen. Two, four, six, eight. And this nitrogen, two, four, six, eight. So now I'm going to draw the final Lewis dot structure. They both have unbonded pairs on the ends. And when you're drawing these, you want them to look as symmetrical as possible because electrons are all negative and that means they want to get away from each other so it's much better to have them on the opposite sides because uh, um, like charges repel. Now I have three sets of electrons in the middle and I'm going to draw three lines one, 
two, three. That's a triple bond. That represents three sets. Every line is two electrons. How many electrons are right up in that area? Six. Six electrons. How many would this represent? Six, because every line is two electrons. So this is the final Lewis dot structure. We have two unbonded pairs right here, unbonded or lone pairs, and we have three sets, three pairs of bonded electrons to get a triple bond. So chlorine had a single bond, oxygen had a double bond, and nitrogen has a triple bond. Okay? All right, now let's go down and do a couple more. We have an example here, C2H2. Now, again, when you're drawing these, you want them to look symmetrical. And let me tell you this, this is important, hydrogen, hydrogen will never be in the middle, will never be in the middle. Please remember that. So you want your, your, your middle atom, your central atom, to be an atom that's missing more than one electron, okay? So what you do is you look at your two atoms, carbons and hydrogens, and see how many electrons they're missing to complete their octet. Okay, here's carbon. Carbon has four valence electrons because it's in column 14 or 4A. And here's hydrogen. It has one valence electron, one. So hydrogen is only missing one electron because it's in that first energy level right there. That means it can only have one um, one energy level can only have two electrons. It already has one, so it only needs one. So hydrogen is missing one, and carbon is in um, energy level two. It, it has four valence electrons. It needs four more to get to the octet. Carbon reaches the octet. Hydrogen just fills up that first energy level. So carbon's missing four. Hydrogen is missing two. So the ones that's missing the most goes in the middle. So missing most or more electronegative um, goes in middle and also more electronegative negative okay so look for those things carbon is more electronegative than hydrogen look again carbon is really close to fluorine. It's more electronegative than hydrogen. Hydrogen's far away. And you could look at your electronegativity chart to verify that. So we, I'm gonna go back up here. Nah, it's at the bottom. Scroll down to the bottom real quick. Carbon, 2.55, hydrogen, 2.20. It's not a really far different, but it is still more electronegative. Okay, so let's put carbon in the middle then. But there's two of them. So the way to make it the most symmetrical is put the two carbons side by side. All right, now we have two hydrogens to deal with, and we want it to be symmetrical. We could put it up here and um, down here because we want it to look, you know, the same. We want to get them far apart, or we could put them on opposite sides. I usually just do it on opposite sides. Now it's not wrong to put it up here and down here but they do need to be on opposite, on separate carbons. If I put them both on the same carbon, that's not symmetrical. This carbon has more on it than the other carbon. So I need to spread them out. All right, now let's figure out how many electrons we have. The carbons, each of them, there are two of them, and they each have four valence electrons, so that's eight electrons. The hydrogens, there are two of them, they each have one valence electron, so that's two. So we have a total of 10 electrons. So we need, should, we need to end with 10 electrons. Okay, so let's take the, let's draw the Lewis dot structures for each one. Hydrogen has one, and the other hydrogen has one. Okay, so that's two of the electrons. Now I gotta draw the electrons for the, each carbon. Each carbon has four, so one, two, three, and four. Four. And I'm putting it right there because these guys are going to go ahead and share it. One, two, three, and four. Okay. Now, one thing I can do automatically is draw this because there is nothing else that hydrogen can, hydrogen can do. It has to get that one electron and that's all it can do. So it's stuck. Now the only thing that means is we can only move the other electrons around because these two electrons have to be there for hydrogen. We cannot put anything else in the middle because hydrogen can only count these two. We can only put things in the middle between the two carbons. So I'm going to take this one and put it in the middle. 
and I'm going to take this one and put it in the middle. And I'm going to erase where it came from. Okay, now let's see what we got. This carbon has two, four, six, seven. And so this one, two, four, six, seven. Anything in the middle, they both get to count. Now remember I told you you're not going to have any ones that are sitting down here by themselves. So I'm going to put this one in the middle and put this one in the middle. And erase where they originally came from. Okay, now let's count. This carbon has two, four, six, eight. It gets to count those same ones that hydrogen had, plus all the ones in the middle between the two central atoms. Two, four, six, eight. And this carbon has two shared with hydrogen, and then two, four, six shared with this carbon, so two, four, six, eight. All right, so everybody's happy now. Both carbons have their octet. Each hydrogen has two. So what does it look like finally? Every two electrons is a single bond. So single bonded to carbon. There's a bond. There's a bond. There's a bond. And then carbon. And then there's another bond. Hydrogen. This is the final Lewis dot structure for C2H2. And notice what there is not. There's no lone pairs, no unbonded electrons. All the electrons are bonded. Now let's count the, in our final um, configuration here and make sure we only have 10 electrons. Every line is two. And so two, I'm not going to write the twos on each one because the, the final picture doesn't have them, but two, four, six, eight, ten. Ten electrons are accounted for just like over here. All right. Great. Now let's move on and we're going to do a few more um, practice problems and then you're going to practice them on your own. Here is um, CHCl3. Okay, first job is w figure out which atom is in the middle. In the middle. Well, carbon has four valence electrons, hydrogen has one, and chlorine has seven because it's in column 17 or 7A. There's column 17 or 7A for chlorine. Okay, so Carbon is missing four, hydrogen is missing only one, and chlorine is missing only one. So carbon has to be in the middle. And I will tell you that carbon is all, always and almost always in the middle. It's one of those that stays in the middle a lot if you, if you have a choice. So now I have to put one hydrogen and three chlorines around carbon. Carbon is the center atom, and we put the other guys around it. Okay, And it does not matter where you decide to put it. So I'm going to put the hydrogen up here and then there's three chlorines. So we're going north, south, east, and west around the central atom. It does not matter if you put your hydrogen on, or on this side and put the three chlorines in the, around here. This is just um, one way to do it. It's as close as I can get to looking symmetrical. Now let's put all the valence electrons. We have four for carbon. So one, two, three, and four. And we have one, so I just used the four. We have one for hydrogen. So here's hydrogen's one. And we have seven for each one of the chlorines. So I'm going to give those, make those black. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I'm going to look and see if I need to move anything. All right, so around this hydrogen, it already has its two, so that's happy. This chlorine has two, four, six, eight. Anything in the middle they get to share. This chlorine has two, four, six, eight. Two north, south, east, and west. And this chlorine has two, four, six, eight north, south, east, and west. And what about carbon? Well, remember, if it's in the middle of the two atoms, it's sharing. So carbon counts, whoops, north two, south two, east two, west two. This carbon also has eight. All of them are happy. You don't have to rearrange any of them at this point. So now we're going to write the final Lewis dot structure. Carbon is in the middle. It's got sharing a pair of electrons with hydrogen. 
it is sharing a pair of electrons with this chlorine it's sharing a pair of electrons with this chlorine and it's sharing a pair of electrons with this chlorine I do want you to change all the pairs that are shared into lines to represent the single bond now we have to draw all the unbonded pairs we have two here one two two on this side and two on this side those are the lone pairs the unbonded pairs and the unbonded pair for this chlorine and for this chlorine all right now let's double check and make sure we only have the the right number of electrons how many did we need we had we ended up with four one and then this times three was 21 because there's three um, chlorine atoms so 21 22 plus 4 is 26 electrons total. I need to have 26 electrons. Do I have that? Let's see. 2, 4, 6, 8. All right, I'll just circle it as I use it. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. 26 electrons. So yes, that is the right configuration. Now, the final configuration should not have all those circles. It should just be this with all the dots. I only circled them for the purpose of showing you how to do it. So this is the final answer right there. Okay, we got one more to practice and I'm gonna have um, pull up some practice problems. I'm gonna have Mrs. Robinson or uh, the other assistant, uh, Mrs. Baker, pause the video so that you can practice. And if you're at home doing this, you just pause it yourself. Okay, one more thing we're going to do is a Lewis dot structure for an ion. Um, remember, ions are positive or negative. So first, let's draw the Lewis dot structure for the chlorine anion. Okay, chlorine, Cl, it has seven valence electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. It needs one more electron to complete its octet. So when it gets that extra electron, it fills in that eighth spot. Then you put brackets around it, and it has it added one electron to make a negative one charge. You put the negative one charge out, outside of the brackets. So that's the chlorine anion. Okay, hydroxide anion. Hydroxide is OH, and it is an anion, so it means it's gotta be negative. So this one's a little bit more complicated. We have oxygen and hydrogen. We have oxygen. Now, how many valence electrons does oxygen have? There it is. It's in column 16, so it has six valence electrons. So we draw those there. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we have um, oxygen, I mean, sorry, hydrogen has its one valence electron. Okay, they both need one more electron in that spot to complete either the two for hydrogen or the octet for oxygen. So when they gain that extra electron, oxygen has two, four, six, eight now, and hydrogen has two. So they have now completed the octet or the two for the hydrogen. So they got one extra electron. So this is a polyatomic ion, two atoms, polyatomic, more than one. And it's going to be a minus one charge because we got one extra electron again. Okay, now we're going to do this. This example here is the ammonium ion, the Lewis dot structure for the ammonium ion. Um, I want you to try this one. We have to figure out what goes in the middle. Remember I told you hydrogen never, ever, 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 ever goes in the middle. Never. So it still isn't going to go in the middle. So I draw nitrogen. I have four hydrogens. One, two, three, Four, north, south, east, and west. Each hydrogen has one valence electron. One, two, three, four. And now um, you're going to add in the uh, nitrogens. Okay, look, how many does nitrogen have? Let's look at that chart. There's nitrogen, column 15, so five valence electrons. So let's draw in nitrogens, five valence electrons. One, two, three, four. Now wait a minute, there's no place to put that fifth valence electron. See, hydrogen already has its two. And this hydrogen has its two. This nitrogen has its two. This hydrogen has its two. And there's no empty spot. I can't put an electron out here. Hydrogen cannot have three electrons. 
So we need to get rid of that extra electron. See, once we get rid of it, because we start off with nitrogen having four, uh, five and hydrogen having one times four, so that's five plus four is nine electrons. There's nine, two, four, six, eight, nine. Well, there's no place for that ninth electron, so we're gonna lose it. And when we lose it, if you lose a negative electron, you get a plus one charge. So it goes away, it becomes a plus one charge. So we redraw it. We put all the um, electrons in it. And now we lost the, that extra ninth electron, so it's now an ion and has a plus one charge. This electron goes away, so we have eight electrons. So when you have um, a positive ion, you're going to have fewer, you're going to not use some of your electrons, you're going to give them away. So you have fewer electrons than you started off with as a possibility. I possibly could use nine, but I only needed eight. So that last one, I'm going to give it away to make the ammonium ion. All right, now this one right here, this predict the formula unit if calcium and fluorine were bonded. That wasn't on your notes, but um, there was another example. I want you to erase what you had before. If you need to pause the video right here, write this in. We're going to predict the formula unit because this is a metal and a nonmetal. So metal, nonmetal, ionic, and ionic bonds form uh, formula units. Okay, so pause it. Write this down if you didn't need to. Okay, now I'm going to do it. We have calcium. And calcium has two valence electrons right there, okay? Two valence electrons. And um, then we have fluorine. And fluorine has seven. Hopefully you know that by now. It's in column 17. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, okay? So we want to bond calcium and fluorine together so calcium is going to need to, did I write down the right thing? Hold on just one second. Okay, anyway, calcium is going to need to give away its two electrons. Well, it can give one of these electrons and put it over here. All right, now that would go away. All right, but it still has another electron to give away. So I'm going to have to get uh, another fluorine atom. So I'm going to put another fluorine atom over here and put its um, seven valence electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and now calcium can give its other electron to that fluorine atom. So I'm going to write it in and erase the electron. So what did we end up with then? Um, what we ha Calcium just lost two electrons to be a plus two charge. So calcium would be a plus two charge. It lost two electrons. There's no valence electrons there anymore. It went from this to this. Lost its two electrons. And fluorine, each fluorine gained one electron right here. And so you gained one electron to become a plus, I mean sorry, a minus one charge. So that one is a minus one and that one is a minus one. So that's the charges. So we're going to end up with calcium bonded to two fluorines because now they're, this is a positive and this is a negative and their electrostatic tor charges, forces are going to attract them to each other. They're going to be attracted. So they're going to, since they're going to be attracted to each other, they form calcium fluoride and there's two fluorines so we have to put a subscript of a two. This is the formula unit for the ionic um, compound calcium fluoride. And so what would happen is this would be put together with a lot of other CAF2s to form that crystal lattice. All right, so now that's the end of what's on your notes. I want you to pause the video and do as many as you can for these right here. And I'm going to work them out and, um, and if after everybody's given their best shot, you can we can turn it on. I mean, I want uh, the video to be restarted and you can see all the answers. Okay, I hope you have got um, these tried. I wanted to show you the answers. This last one, I'm gonna we're gonna wait and do that one in class because it's a it's one that has that OH with the hydroxide ion in it, and we have to treat that in a special way. So I will show you that when we get 
back together in class. Now let's look at these others. Um, this is uh, phosphorus with three bromines. The phosphorus has five valence electrons. Bromine has seven, but there are three of them. Three times seven is 21. That's a total of 26 electrons. When you put the 26 electrons around, um, oh, I just realized I drew an extra bromine in the answer here. Let me erase that. That's not what happens. We have the uh, the unpaired, the unbonded pair goes down here. There we go. Um, so now well, there's a correct answer. We have three bromines around the unbonded pair and each one of these lines represent two electrons. So if we count the electrons again, we have around each bromine 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. 26 electrons again. So this is the correct configuration for the, the phosphorus tribromide. And now here we have N2H2. Nitrogen has five valence electrons, but there are two of them. So five times two is 10. Hydrogen has one valence electron and there's two of them. So one times two is two. I put the hydrogen electrons in as green. And so the total here was 12 electrons, 12 electrons. So the hydrogen electrons were green. There's one there and one there. And the nitrogen electrons were blue. And so there's all of them. There's 10 of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. I moved them around until I reached the noctet. So this nitrogen has two, four, six, eight. This one has two, four, six, eight. And this each hydrogen has only two. Every two shared electrons is a single bond. So there's a pair here and a pair here to give the double bond in between the two nitrogens. Remember I spread it out to make it symmetrical. And then we have two unbonded pairs. So 12 electrons are in, in this. Let's count 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 12 electrons. I promise you if you will check and make sure that you're counting the electrons, you're going to do a better job of getting these correct. Um, the last one, we have nitrogen with five valence electrons, oxygen with two, now this one's a little more tricky, but there's, I mean, sorry, with six valence electrons, but there are two of them. So two times six is 12. So we start off with 17 valence electrons, but this negative one charge means I added in one more electron. Every time you have a negative one, that's because we added in a negative one. We added an extra electron. So now we have to add that extra electron in to the total count of electrons available are 18. So once I put them all in, I put the five valence electrons for the nitrogens in green, one, two, three, four, five. The 12 for oxygens in blue, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. And the extra valence electron that I added in pink, it filled in that spot. So now we have the, I move them around until I have an octet around oxygen, an octet around nitrogen, two, four, six, eight, and an octet around the other nox oxygen, two, four, six, eight. Now you'll notice this time I had to form a double bond between one of the oxygen atoms. And so two, four, six, eight still, and this one, this oxygen atom only has a single bond, two, four, six, eight, and then nitrogen has two, four, six, and then eight at the top. So this is the correct configuration or this one. It doesn't matter which one of the oxygens you form the double bond with. Either way is okay. And you could put this lone pair on the top or on the bottom. It doesn't matter for that either. All right. I hope you did okay. You're going to have homework on these now. And um, we're going to have some tutoring sessions later if you need additional help. This one we're going to do in class. I will see you soon. Good luck.